I love the convenience of action cams and things like that because they're so quick and easy to use and you don't have to faff around with the camera all the time when you want to use it when you're out and about. I don't use them for sports and stuff like that but I do love their ease of use. But one thing I don't like about them is the fact that when you take them indoors or into a low light situation they really don't work really that well and um, the problem here is I live in the UK and the light isn't always that good so I sometimes I want something that's going to be able to work in quite low and bluish looking light conditions and we're so used to seeing GoPros and whatnot looking so good when they're taken out in the USA when they've got lovely weather or Florida or something like that and, and actually when I was out there and while I went out to Menorca with a, a GoPro as well I noticed that the colors were much brighter uh, more saturated bluer and bluer and cleaner looking than they, they ever look in the UK so I wanted something to replace my GoPro and and my action actually um, with something that I wanted to replace them both really with something that would work in lower light conditions and in this sort of grey light that we often get in the UK. So I took a really long hard look at the Pocket 3 and thought that could do it. The only thing I didn't like about that was the fact that it has the gimbal on the top which is great for low light but it's a bit delicate for just shoving in your pocket. I felt that it was a bit delicate and I have had experience with the Pocket 1 and Pocket 2 and you drop those and they're goners, that's it. So I wanted something a bit more robust and that's where the Ace Pro came in. The Ace Pro has a pure video mode which works beautifully for low light and indoors and that's what I'm using now because it's so grey today and that was one thing that really attracted me to this camera because it enhances the footage and makes it less grainy. It's also got a larger sensor and it's way more robust than the Pocket 3 I think. Oh, me. So I got myself a nice new load of kit one of those Insta selfie sticks, bends all over the place, hangs from doors, tripod legs, really good. The audio attachment, of course, for decent audio or reasonably decent audio. So as you can hear, I'm behind the camera now and everything still sounds pretty normal. And because I tend to take these things away with me when I'm out traveling and everything, I got myself a spare battery, but so far I haven't had to use the battery at all. Then I decided to go mad and got the preview watch the Bluetooth connection thing. This is fantastic. Put the camera anywhere and set it off and I can see the picture on here as well. It's great, really useful. Finally, I succumbed to a quick release mount, which means I can attach it to quarter inch threads and things like that. They're not cheap either. I think they're quite expensive for what they are, but nevertheless, now I can attach it to tripods and things like that as well. So it's not a cheap setup, but I wanted something that would work in low light conditions. So what you see here is what you would get in UK grey conditions. It's hazy, it's not at all bright, although I'm squinting probably because I haven't got my glasses on. And this is the kind of light that we typically get in the UK. One thing that bothered me before I got this was the idea that close focus wouldn't be too good because of the larger sensor. And many people on YouTube were saying that this didn't focus that close. In fact, I find it's pretty much okay at this distance, which is a kind of a vlogging distance. If I get closer, this is what it looks like. And now I'm getting a little bit too close for comfort, but uh, you might be able to see too much. But hopefully it's going a little bit blurry and not showing too much of uh, what's going wrong with my face. If I get any closer than this, I think it's definitely going to go out. But at the moment, that's about a foot and a half. And if it's usable, then that's OK, uh, because these things are uh, they're fixed focus. But if I get any closer, you've probably seen now it's gone totally out of focus, probably. But at normal sort of distances where you're holding this thing like this and you're moving, especially when you're moving, you wouldn't notice it too much and it's fine at longer distances anyway. So the other thing that did bother me was the fact that the front cover doesn't come away from the lens. So I can't put filters directly on there. And that did worry me. And I must admit, one of the things I still don't like is the fact that when I want to use a filter, I've got to slide it over that cover. There were people saying the cover doesn't come off and in fact it does come off, it's glued there but if you, you can crack the glue and it comes off you can put another one on there easily. Um, I'm thinking of cracking mine to see if I can find something to fit it so I can screw filters on rather than push filters onto there because I don't like the fact that they're just hanging on there and could easily come off if you bash them or something. 
When I first got the camera, I took it down to Chichester in the south of the UK, and I went to Chichester Cathedral and took some shots in there where the light was really appalling, and I was surprised what I got. I'll post the, uh, a link to that at the top here, because that video was quite incredible considering it was taken on an action cam. In use, it's very similar to the Action 4. The menu system and everything really resembles the Action 4 menu system. So you're quite at home if you come from an Action 4 or an Action 3 on this thing because it does look so similar on the back. Also, the footage you get from this camera is pretty similar to the Action 4. The colour's slightly different. I think, if anything, the colour might be a little bit more vivid with this camera. But they do mix pretty easily if you want to mix footage in post. I'm just hoping that Insta360 put a filter thread on the front though, that would be nice. So to finish, I get great results from this camera with very little wasted footage. Low light performance is absolutely amazing and actually the stabilisation is pretty good as well. It seems to have a great dynamic range and colour and on cue, the sun's come out, so that's quite nice. So this thing is actually pretty good all round, especially if you set the uh, uh, exposure to face as well because it does seem to lock onto your face as far as exposure goes. It's a great camera and it's actually one I don't think I regret buying. Hope to see you next time. Cheers for now.